This is a Thorium Energy Alliance Technology Talk from the inaugural Future of Energy Conference, October 2009. To find out more about Thorium Energy, please visit thoriumenergyalliance.com. This talk is from me, John Kutch. My topic was why we should be working towards a Thorium Energy future. So, you know, just a, a little one last final thought that, uh, you know, in the vein of uh, what Martin said about Linux, you know, uh, you know, this uh, and uh, Wikipedia we have, we're, we're blessed in this day and age to see, you know, that uh, groups can outsource much, much work that would have cost billions and billions of dollars if a private corporation had tried to do it. And, you know, uh, you get uh, a lot of talks, uh, Ralph's talk, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the talks uh, sort of refer to a very linear progression, you know, this, then, that, this, and then and maybe in a hundred years we'll have it. And I, I'm a big believer that radical change happens radically fast. And a little tiny example is, and I was talking to a few folks yesterday, you know, the Tesla motor car company started out just six years ago. Some guy, uh, I can't remember if he was laid off or he sold his company, but the, the GM Impact fiasco had just ended and GM had just crushed the last of its uh, cars. And he said, why can't we build an electric car? And so he, he bought 10,000 uh, laptop batteries and soldered them together and made himself a super fast sports car. As, and I'm sure you all are pretty familiar with it, that he then got investors. People saw him driving around in this thing. Investors led to uh, venture capital. And this year, just a few months ago, $582 million contract in the United States government to produce the, the, the drive controller and drivetrain. And he also has a confirmed, uh, I believe, $300 million in sales, and they're going to come out with their sedan next year. So look at it. In six years, it went from some guy just farting around in his garage, literally just screwing around, to a, a billion-dollar corporation in six years, almost on a lark. And uh, so I know, I know with, uh, with uh, great assurity that, that these timelines... And I know there's licensing and, you know, trying to turn the ship to state and all these other reasons why it would slow down. But I think, uh, I think it would, we would be in great peril if we didn't, didn't work this fast. As we were pointed out uh, quite frighteningly, uh, Jim Kennedy, uh, you know, pointed out that uh, China would very, very happily eat our lunch. And, uh, um, and uh, India is a fairly good-sized threat, too, even if, it's, even if they were the most benign of threats, they're still... A threat and there's only so many resources the way we use them now <clears throat> and I think so unfortunately we lost our, our colonel here but uh, um, Congress and uh, Vince and I know very well that Congress doesn't move unless they have some sort of existential threat uh, you know they say that real climate change legislation won't happen until people are uh, treading water in my you know downtown Miami and uh, you know you can see with the health care bill the, the state that uh, the insurance situation had to get, you know, 50 million people uninsured, probably another 50 million people with insurance that isn't worth a hill of beans. It took almost 100 million Americans before we finally decided to tackle this in any sort of manner, not, you know, withstanding whether, you know, it's going to work out real great, but, you know, that's the sort of thing it takes. And I believe, you know, I believe we're in, an, an <clears throat> excuse me, we're in an existential situation right here. And unfortunately, it's fallen upon our shoulders. We've volunteered, you know, you have self-selected yourself to volunteer to let the world know that there's a, we're in a real tough bind here, and especially Europe and the United States. You know, we are sister uh, nations and countries, really, and uh, if we want to continue living any sort of quality of life, and, uh, and not just because we want to have DVDs and flat screen TVs, you know, why are we doing this? You know, the last final little thread here is the why. Why, why did you guys spend probably your own money to come out here? You know, why did we do this? And, I'll tell you from my perspective, why am I doing this? And I'll, what little you may know of me, I'll say, I don't have kids, and I'll never have kids. So one of the big reasons people give for taking up a task like this is like, I want to make a better world for my children and my grandchildren. And, uh, you know, I, I don't have that impetus. You know, when I'm gone, you know, maybe 20 years if I'm lucky, I'll be checking out of here, and I'll just be, you know, tomato food at that point. <laughs> you know, so, so, so why, you know, what, why am I doing this? And I've, I've actually, you know, questioned this. My wife's brought this up quite often. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, and, uh, and so I, the only decent uh, answer that I've been able to come up with is sort of uh, the public radio answer. I'm a big listener to public radio, and there's no reason to actually pledge money to it. The, the radio won't go off the air. My, you know, $10 a month isn't going to really mean a hill of beans. You know, it's one drop in the bucket. But you do it. Why do you do it? Why do you do Thorium Energy Alliance? 
They do it because you should. It's the right thing, you know. I'm using up a lot of resources being an American and uh, living on this planet in this day and age. You know, I'm using this world up faster than any other type of person in this planet, you know, and, uh, and it's just the right thing to do. And I know that's probably a little broad and a little wishy-washy and not very specific, but it's as specific as I can get. And I just wanted to share that with you, that you're doing the right thing, you know. If for no other reason, this is a moral thing we're doing here. This is a, this is a just cause we're going after, and it's, it's not often that you can see that with a bright white light that, you know, when you go to your office as an accountant or whether you're, you know, digging ditches, you know, what am I doing? Will this make a difference? Will this live on after I'm gone? Will it make the world a better place for my child? And uh, for once, you know, we've managed to stumble upon something that is, in fact, you know, the right thing to do. And uh, I'm so proud of you all, and I can't thank you enough for, for coming here. So give yourselves a